Tales of the House by Mac Barnett and Matt Myers. Ian always followed the rules. Here he is following the rule, always pack a toothbrush. Rules are meant to be followed, Ian would always say, because he meant it. Ian's older sister was Jenny, and she never followed the rules. Here she is breaking the rule, don't pinch. Jenny pinch me, said Ian. No, I didn't, said Jenny. Don't tell lies, said Dad as he pulled up to their vacation house in the woods. That is a very important rule. The house in the woods was tidy and warm. The living room had a potbelly stove and the den had a bearskin rug and the bathroom had a clawfoot tub. Ian thought it was great. Best of all was a framed piece of paper in the hallway that said, The Rules of the House. Look, said Ian, rules. You're such a toady, said Jenny, and then pinched him. Ouch, said Ian. You're not supposed to ouch. Ian drew a deep breath and read out the rules with gusto. The Rules of the House. We trust you will respect the house by observing the following rules. One, remove muddy shoes before you enter the house. Two, don't leave a ring around the bathtub drain. Three, replace any firewood you burn. And four, never, ever open the red door. Everybody got that, said Ian. Yes, Toady, said Jenny. Ouch, said Ian. During the day, Ian and Jenny and Dad did forest things like hiking. Ian kept to the marked trails. And swimming, Ian waited an hour after eating. And climbing trees, Ian climbed no branch higher than his head. But this is not a story about the forest. This is a story about the house. Because, of course, it wasn't long before Jenny started breaking the rules. She tracked mud all over the rug, her hair wrapped around the drain, and she loved roasting marshmallows, but never gathered more wood. Jenny, said Ian, you're breaking the rules. Ian, said Jenny, I wish you would disappear. Ian pointed to the paper on the wall. You've already broken rules one through three. So what, said Jenny. It's not even our house. Doesn't matter, said Ian. Rules are rules, and rules are meant to be... Listen, Toady. Jenny moved toward the red door. If you say that one more time, I swear I'll open this door. Rules are meant to be... Jenny turned the knob. Ian shouted, rules are meant to be followed. Jenny flung the door open. Nothing happened. Until that night. The rug was the first to knock on their bedroom door. My beautiful fur is matted and muddy, he said. Who broke the rules of the house? We did, said Jenny. Liar, said Ian. It was only her. Toady, said Jenny. The rug smiled and said, I will have this rule breaker for my dinner. Not so fast, the tub leaped into the room. I've had a taste of her hair and I'm hungry for more. I will have this rule breaker for my dinner. But what about me, said the stove. My belly is empty and there is no wood downstairs. I will have this rule breaker for my dinner. Those terrible creatures stepped closer and closer. Ian knew 
just what to do. He grabbed his toothbrush and he ran away. Serves her right, thought Ian as he ran through the woods. She should have listened, thought Ian as he jumped over roots. After all, thought Ian as he ducked under a branch, rules are meant to be... Ian stopped. He scratched his arm, the one that usually got pinched. He decided, even if there wasn't a rule that said, always save your sister from being eaten by monsters, maybe there should be. When Ian got back to the house, the creatures were all in the kitchen. The tub and the stove boiled some water while the rug chopped aromatic vegetables. Rule breaker soup for dinner, they sang. Rule breaker soup for dinner. It wasn't a very clever song, but the tune was catchy. Rule breaker soup for dinner, they built it out in a three-part harmony. Ian rushed into the kitchen. Stop, he said. Don't eat my sister. But Ian, said the stove, she didn't follow the rules. Yeah, but, said Ian, but it was then that Ian realized he didn't have a plan. If you want to eat my sister, you'll have to eat me first. Brilliant. The monsters wouldn't eat him. Ian always followed the rules. Okay, said the stove. Let's eat him fast like an appetizer. Apparently, there were no rules about who monsters could eat. The creatures drooled as they drew closer. Ian backed against the wall and brandished his toothbrush. The monster stopped. What is that? asked the rug. That red thing in his head. Ian looked down. It's a toothbrush. A toothbrush? asked the stove. What's that? You use it to clean your teeth after you eat, said Ian. Don't you guys have toothbrushes? No, said the tub, looking very solemn. We have never seen one before. Ian laughed. <laughs> you are going to eat us and you don't even have toothbrushes? You're supposed to always pack a toothbrush. That's a rule. It is? asked the tub. Yes, said Ian. You broke a rule. You're rule breakers. We are, asked the rug. What's going to happen to us? Ian remembered his father's words. Don't tell lies. Then he forgot them. Oh, man, said Ian. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. When you break the toothbrush rule, very bad things happen. When you break the toothbrush rule, a huge monster comes for you. How big is the monster? asked the tub. As big as you three put together plus a little bit. Oh my, said the stove. Yes, said Ian. The monster has long hair and green eyes and sharp pink nails and it creeps up behind you and gives you a pinch. Ian, said the rug, what is a pinch? Ian nodded at Jenny and said, this is... And Jenny gave each of the monsters a good hard pinch from behind. Ouch! cried the creatures. They fled down the hall and through the red door. Ian and Jenny slammed it shut behind them. Thank you, said Jenny. You're welcome, said Ian. You lied for me, said Jenny. So, said Ian. So, isn't that against the rules? Don't be a toady, said Ian. Jenny pinched him, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs>